हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर राजीव धवन योर एन टी फैकल्टी लेट अस रिकॉल द क्वेश्चन ऑफ नीट पी जी टू जीरो टू टू विच वर आस्ट इन दगमेंट ऑफ ई एन टी दिस टाइम ई एन टी क्वेश्चन वर हाईली प्रिडिक्टेबल द गुड थिंग इज एंड वट एवर आई कुड कलेक्ट द डेटा फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट्स ऑन द बेस ऑफ रिकॉल आई एम शेयरिंग विद यू हाउ देर मे बी सर्टन यू नो फाइन चेंजेस इन द स्टेटमेंट और द चॉइसिस एज द टाइम यू नो फर्दर the passes so let us see the question asked the first question which was uh, asked was about a child who is 6 year old who presents to ENT OPD with the mother and the mother is complaining of hearing loss with the child and the otoscopy picture is given in the image and this was the otoscopy picture as has been recalled by the students and this is a classical picture of the glue ear and the glue ear is more common in school age children the age supports a diagnosis 6 year old child and the commonest cause of glue ear is adenoid hypertrophy and that is again a disease of school age children and you can see the changes in the tympanic membrane in the glue ear are typically visible over here there is a mild retraction of tympanic membrane and there is glue behind the tympanic membrane in the middle ear and you know glue is sterile and this glue can have air bubbles trapped into the glue and you can see the you know air bubbles very clearly behind the tympanic membrane so the classical diagnosis is glue ear which is also called as serous otitis media also called as secretory otitis media or otitis media with effusion the new name of this entity as we discussed in the class also that the new name of this entity is otitis media with effusion so the answer is a which is other name of glue ear let us go to second question the second question again was about male patient an adult male patient and he presents to the ENT with the problem of nasal obstruction and severe nasal bleeding so nasal blockage severe epistaxis in a male patient with the endoscopy of the nose showing a mass in the coana what is the possible diagnosis is it angiofibroma or inverted papilloma or an entrocornal polyp or rhinosporidiosis now guys this is a typical case again of uh, the juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma however the age given was little atypical i can understand that but you know the certain cases may be presenting little later so this chap is having lot of you know things to support a diagnosis of the, the angiofibroma number one the nasal mass and severe epistaxis and the male gender over there so it cannot be inverted papilloma it cannot be inverted papilloma because inverted papilloma is seen in you know 40 to 60 years of male patient of course more commonly and the inverted papilloma would never have severe epistaxis it cannot be entrocornal polyp because the polyps do not bleed like this of course rhinosporidiosis is not a possible diagnosis because rhinosporidiosis would be having a mulberry like nasal mass with mild epistaxis so the classical answer would be a it is angiofibroma how it's a little a delayed presentation as we discussed in the class the question can be very typical from the notes only but little bit of you know change they can do depending on the you know situation okay so i'm sure you would have marked the angiofibroma in this case the third patient was an adult patient who was having food and suddenly developed some feeling of choking and is unable to produce any sound voice over there so choking and aphonia while eating something is of course a case of the laryngeal foreign body this chap has aspirated the food particle as a laryngeal foreign body so that's why there is choking and aphonia and the immediate management asked in this question and the answer will be the hemlich maneuver the first treatment for laryngeal foreign body in which you press the epigastrium in the backward and upward direction so the answer of this question will be hemlich maneuver chest back thrust which we use generally in a in a child actually it's an adult patient so this is not diagnosis you can't of course intubate the patient because there is laryngeal foreign body so intubation is not possible and cricothoracotomy is only done if hemlich maneuver fails so principal management will be hemlich maneuver okay the next question a patient has developed high frequency snhl and the cause of hearing loss is found to be related to some pathology of the basilar membrane i hope you remember basilar membrane is the membrane which supports the organ of corta i actually which structure lies closest to the site of pathology so this is high frequency snhl and is it stria vascularis of cochlea or oval window area or the modulus modulus is the central you know bony structure around which the the cochlear turns revolve or is helicotrema helicotrema is the other name of apex of cochlea 
we have discussed this multiple times in the class also that the cochlea is like this actually it's a coil tube if you see it's a coil tube and this is the basal turn of cochlea and this is the apex of cochlea the basal turn senses high frequency sound and apex senses low frequency sound and this is a case of high frequency snhl it's a case of high frequency snhl so the problem would be lying in the basal turn of cochlea and you know the stapes foot plate lies in the oval window and the anatomical structure closest to the area of pathology will be oval window area because oval window is at the basal turn of the cochlea okay so the answer of this question will be the oval window oval window is the answer okay it cannot be apex of course because apex senses low frequency sounds and the basal turn senses high frequency sounds so closest structure to the basal turn would be oval window area next question adult patient is having you know known profile of bronchial asthma and patient has a history of taking some regular medications the nasal examination shows the presence of nasal polypi which drug is most likely sensitive or allergic to the answer is aspirin beta aspirin and i'm sure you can see asthma over there polyp over there so this is a classical case of samtestride and samtestride is allergy to aspirin or any other nsaid also asthma and nasal polypi so it's a classical case of the samtestride asked in the form of a story with the asthma in the profile and the endoscopy showing nasal polyp so of course a drug sensitivity or allergy would be to the aspirin okay now another question asked a young diabetic patient presenting to entm opd with the problem of some blood stain nasal discharge given some people say some ocular things were also given some eye involvement was also mentioned and there is a history of loss of upper teeth now this is a classical case of mucormycosis actually now mucormycosis he is asking what is the first investigation would you like to order now a lot of people are debating is it nasal swab no nasal swab is not of any value in the management of mucormycosis this patient is already diabetic with the loss of upper teeth with other things mentioned around nose or eye so mucormycosis is the clinical diagnosis i am more than interested to find out the extent of the spread of the disease to plan the treatment further because i need to debride the patient surgically and i need to start the amphotericin b also merely you know showing the presence of mold on the koh nasal smear would not help me in the diagnosis the reason is mold is a commensal it is found in everyone in you and me everyone in the nose in the nasal mucosa you can establish the nasal mold in the in the swab but that would not really help me conclude any diagnosis or help me in the management so the best approach in this patient would be go for a mri urgently because you are having a clinical suspicion of mucormycosis and you want to ascertain whether it has spread to you know the neighboring areas or not so the answer in this question would be mri of course nasal swab would not yield any you know information which is going to really help me to really plan my management in this case because it's a clinical diagnosis of mucormycosis one more question asked was identify the bone in shown the image and this bone what people have shared on the different social media is incus actually incus and incus has a body you know incus has a body this is body of the incus this is short process of incus this is long process of incus and this is the lenticular process of incus in the lenticular process of incus so it cannot be malleus because incus is like a anvil and you know incus it looks different from malleus because malleus would be having a beautiful head actually so this is the head of the malleus which incus has a body actually okay so this is the lateral process of the malleus this is the handle of the malleus and this is the umbo umbo so the answer to this question was incus as as the images shared by the people on the social media it is supporting that it was incus over there so these were the various questions collected as of now from the various you know uh, resources whatever i could really you know gather from however i do have a disclaimer over there there may be certain more you know statement additions or deletions or the you know choices added or deleted however the essence of that question or the topics asked were these were in the ent i wish you good luck for your results and i just have one suggestion for you all of you as the neat pg ended you know you just use this time for doing some non academic thing you know before the result is out thank you very much best wishes to everyone